I see it for myself in the Bible. I followed the biblical calendar through with a ca calculator, and I see it for myself. It's it all fits together perfectly, like the gears of a clock. Uh, the Noah's flood was in 4990 BC, for example, which is exactly 7,000 years from May 21st, 2011, and. He, God talks about how it will be seven days before he destroys the world with a flood. He told Noah in Genesis 7-4. And in 2 Peter 3-8, he tells us a day is like a thousand years. So that's one of the time paths, but there are dozens of them. Mm -hmm. Right, well, I think that we need to all take the example of the Ninevites. And what they did when Jonah said, you have 40 days, God's going to destroy the city. They humbled themselves and they cried out to God. They prayed and prayed for mercy. Uh, read the Bible. I always tell everyone, read the Bible, because while we're hearing God's Word, that's how we can hear from God. It's His Word. I believe it will happen on the 21st, according to the Bible. All, all over the world, starting, starting in the first time zone, possibly starting in the first time zone, around 6 p.m., God's people will be lifted up to heaven, and there will be a huge earthquake and destruction, and then it will go around the world every time zone by time zone around 6 p.m. So we'll actually be able to see it coming. We've been to all at once, but the, you know the thing is, the way our earth is set up with time zones, there is no one hour when it's the same date on the whole world. So in order for it to actually be May 21st, as God has directed us to believe through his word, that he's going to do this rolling earthquake. There's a lot of evidence in scripture. Um, it talks about how we will see, we'll see the disaster coming. Men will go hide themselves in caves, uh, trying to get away from it. So yeah, it's not a, it's not a pretty picture. I don't want to be here. I'm going to be home with my family, um, reading my Bible and praying. I thought about that stuff. Um, it's supposed to happen in the twinkling of an eye. So in an instant, it says in an instant will be changed. Be that fast. And the graves will be opened. So, I mean, that's exciting. If, if I am left behind, I want to go check out a graveyard because there should be bodies thrown out of the graves. You know, I believe, I, I'm, I feel like I'm saved because I, God has been drawing me to himself. I love the Bible. But I don't think that we should say that we have peace and safety, that we are guaranteed that we're saved. I think that's kind of a prideful position. I think we need to be humble and say, I hope I'm saved. I hope God has mercy on me. I do believe that Jesus rose from the dead, but just by saying those words doesn't guarantee that I'm saved. When, if I talk to the Campy group uh, about the coming of the Lord, uh, I can't understand, and I've read some of the stuff that they put out and tried to uh, understand where they're coming from because I'm thinking, okay, if they're, if they're beating a drum about this, making a big racket about this, what do they really believe? And I see their reasoning, but I can't get away from the fact that Jesus made it clear whether he was talking to Peter in John 21 when he, was, when, when he and John was having this he was having this conversation by the river there at I see a Tiberius rather, and 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 Peter said, "What about John? You know, if, if if and Jesus said, if he tarries till I come, what's that to you? You know, you follow me. It it really doesn't matter uh, what happens in the world. Jesus could come today, uh, and I would I would say this: we can get so caught up in worrying about dates and times, we forget to do our business. And, uh, and my, I remember when my father uh, used to leave home and go to work in the morning. When I was a boy growing up, we had uh, an area of a farm of sorts, small farm, and we had corn planted. And he'd say, "Son, I'm coming home and see him with that corn hoed." Uh, if I spent the day worrying about what time he was coming, I wouldn't get the corn hoed. My business was to get the corn hoed. And I think that's what the Lord really was trying to say. It's really not to, for you to worry about the day nor the hour. You just get the business done. And, and the scriptures really tell us that. When I read the whole Bible, when I read Genesis, and I read about Noah. I know he's talking about Noah going in the ark for, um, in the ark for seven days and then the Lord came. And, and that's true. But I don't know that that applies to us. Uh, he's working on his date system, 
and I don't know how he gets all that. I can't understand how he's getting all that. He's making a lot of assumptions. But I'm not criticizing him for that. I mean, he's a smart man. He's doing his thing. But I, when I look at Noah, though, what I know is when the gospel message was not changing lives, the Lord judged the world. Uh, I mean, Noah preached over 100 years, and nobody was converted. His family they were converted when he started. Uh, when Lot was in Sodom and Gomorrah, and when he couldn't find five, then he dealt with Sodom and Gomorrah. So I would say, and I'm not sure of this, because the Lord could come tomorrow. He's not waiting till the gospel won't you know, affect people. But right now, there's 16,000 Muslims a day coming to Jesus Christ in the world. Hmm. There's 10,000 um, 10, Chinese in China coming to Christ a day. That's on average in the world. The Lord is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance, Peter says. So I would say right now, the gospel message is being heard all over the world. You know, I just can't believe God's going to blow the horn when all that's happening and all that hunger is there because he loves us. But, that's not to say he won't. But I don't know if it's the 21st, 22nd, or the 20th, or it might be tonight. But whatever it is, we know it's going to happen. I would say to the campies, you know, I, I don't know uh, where you're getting a lot of your stuff, and I'm glad that you're working for Jesus, but I would I would encourage you not to worry about dates and times. Well, the Bible teaches that, you know, even when Matthew talks about it, uh, that, you know, it'll be nighttime in, in one zone and daytime in another zone, but it'll happen instantaneously. You know, in First Thessalonians 4, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, you know, the dead in Christ shall rise and we which remain alive or will be caught up together with them. Uh, so it'll be such a quick thing. Paul tells us in First Corinthians, uh, you know, uh, that, that uh, you know, I'll show you a mystery. You know, we'll, we'll not all sleep, but we'll be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. So it'll be so quick that uh, it'll happen before you even take the next breath. And no, it's not going to go boom, 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 boom. Like, I mean, they're looking at it like the New Year's coming in. You know, you can see it, you know, as it fades across the world. Not biblical. <clears throat> I said, we should examine ourselves to see if we really have the Holy Spirit living in us. Because God's Spirit bears witness with our spirit if we are the children of God. And so, just because a person prayed a prayer and, and said, or been in a baptismal pool or had water put on them or whatever by some preacher or priest or whatever... That doesn't mean they're saved. That's true. A relationship with Jesus Christ is salvation. And the relationship with Jesus Christ, if you could get it and not know it, then it must not be much. So when you get a relationship with Jesus Christ, it is, it's a powerful thing. And so uh, uh, Jesus bears witness with us that we have. Now he tells us in the book of Hebrews that he will chasten those that are not his. So... All the writers, including Jesus Christ, made it, made, it, made it plain that we need to really examine ourselves and see if we are his, truly His. He, he said, you know, if you're not willing to take up your cross and follow me, to die, deny yourself daily and take up your cross and follow me, you can't be mine. If you put your hands to the plow and look back, you can't be mine. So Jesus made sure, he continually said, you need to examine yourself. You need to see if you really have a relationship with me. And then the New Testament writers followed suit, John as well as the writer of Hebrews, to say, if you have a Lord in your life, uh, he'll spank you if you're wrong. If he don't spank you, you don't have a Lord in your life. 